Welcome to Musician Profiles, celebrating racial diversity. This is Ixam's monthly series of short videos to feature orchestra musicians of color. I'm Stephen Leifer. I'm a horn player in the Rochester Philharmonic Orchestra and Ixam alternate delegate. This month, we're departing from our usual format to chat with tuba player Cameron Hall, who comes from Atlanta, Georgia. Cameron is this year's winner of Ixam's Boston University Tanglewood Institute Scholarship. Starting this year and running through 2027, the scholarship provides support for underrepresented young musicians who benefit from taking part in the immersive summer music program at BUTI. The program is intended to bridge the gap to a professional career and overcome financial barriers for high school aged musicians from underrepresented groups. Following on after his summer at Tanglewood, Cameron will be attending the University of Miami's Frost School of Music this fall. I'm happy to get to chat with him about why this scholarship was important to him, what he got out of attending BUTI, and why opportunities like this are crucial. Cameron, thanks for being here. It's my pleasure. Should we get right to our questions? Sounds good to me. Awesome. Tell us a bit about your background. Any other, any other musicians in your family? Surprisingly not. Um, both my parents were in marching band in high school, but beyond that, um, I think I'm the only person to really take classical music very seriously. Um, but they they support me always and you know even though they may not quite understand some like the lingo and things like that they're definitely in my corner fighting for me and, and you know giving me all these opportunities to try new things and meet new people um, but outside of that um i started band in sixth grade in texas where band is it's as big as athletics and oh, yeah. it's it's ridiculous how much funding you know Texas schools get in that apartment. So I was already out to a great start at a great school. And I just kept falling in love each year, year after year after year, and just finding new ways to, you know, practice and to prepare. And, you know, eventually I started finding music that spoke to me more than, you know, what my band director would put on my stand. Hmm. And so I think, um, you know, whenever we were locked down in quarantine, that was a lot of it was it was a lot mentally, you know, on everybody, but I was able to find a safe space and just being able to practice and just putting something different in front of me that I hadn't seen before and just just experimenting, listening to music and trying new things. And that's kind of where I got my start, really wanting to pursue classical music. Um, and ever since then, I've just been on the train. That's great. Why the tuba of all things? I'm sure you get that question all the time. I do. And it's a it's a very, very middle school boy answer of, you know, I thought it sounded <laughs> funny. So, uh, you know, we kind of had like a, an instrument fair where you could try out all the instruments. And I went straight for the tuba oh, and sure. from the very first note. It was love at first sound. So um, that's the only instrument I even tried. And I, I knew from the start that I was going to have a future playing the tuba. So I gave it a shot and I'm glad I did. Good to know your goals early on. Uh, tell us about the first time you heard an orchestra live and what kind of an impression that made on you. Ooh. I want to say in fifth grade, I heard the Fort Worth Symphony on a, a field trip, you know, as a means of kind of getting us um, to want to join band the next year in sixth grade. And, you know, I didn't take it too serious at the time because I was just thinking, oh, you know, I'll join band because my friends will join band. But I kind of noticed, you know, I could pick certain players out that were very passionate in their playing. Like they, they were into it almost comically into it. And that kind of really resonated with me. I was like, wow, these people aren't, you know, like this isn't their job. They're kind of like, they love this and they're, they're treating each and every note, like, you know, it's their last. And, and while, you know, some people kind of poked fun at that, you know, I, I really thought that was truly powerful. And I think they, one of the pieces they played was the Cowboys by John Williams. I didn't, Oh, yeah. I recognized that at the time, but I can remember that because I was so like enthralled in what they were doing. I was like, wow, this is incredible. Like, you know, just a few weeks prior, we were playing recorder and we couldn't even muster to play the same <laughs> note. Let alone these people are playing full pieces and and yeah. not only that, but at almost perfect accuracy. And, and it was really incredible to see. So I I remember that moment. All Would you say this was the this was the moment that made you want to become an orchestra musician, or was it a different one? Um, I don't know if I quite wanted to be a musician after that, but that was definitely something that, you know, whenever I kind of like, you know, I was playing to it, and I was like, man, I'm just playing whole notes back here. You know, I was like, well, one of these times I'm gonna 
really lock in like that and I'm going to have that experience. I'm going to be like feeling every single note and feeling, you know, just the music around me and it's going to like encapsulate me and take over my body. And, and it hadn't happened yet. Cause you know, sixth grade band still playing whole notes and half notes, but you know, eventually that feeling started to kick in a lot. And like I said, or, you know, when I started high school and unfortunately I wasn't able to play in large ensembles, that's kind of whenever I had the biggest drive to play in large ensembles because I was listening to more music than ever. And so I was like, you know, man, I hope I can play this one day. I hope I can play this one day. And so it kind of took off from there. Right. Uh, when did you first hear about the uh, scholarship and what was the process of applying for that? Like, so I applied to BUTI um, this spring. And of course, you know, I look for, you know, as much financial aid as possible because, you know, I love to make music. I love to, you know, go on, you know, these musical journeys where I can meet other musicians from across the country and collaborate and make music. But of course, that comes with a price. Mm. So, you know, when I was filling out the audition, I saw there was a scholarship. Of course, I had to jump on that as well because, you know, I, I would hate to feel like I missed out because I couldn't afford the trip. And so I'm super grateful that, you know, scholarships like, you know, Excel Scholarship exist because, you know, it really opens up a path to musicians that may feel like they're cornered by their finances. And that's something that you shouldn't have to experience at such a young age. You should be able to try new things and open new doors and get all the experience you can. Absolutely. Uh, what was your overall impression of your experience at Tanglewood? I had a great time. Um, I'm a Georgia guy, so, you know, I'm used to hot weather. So waking up at <laughs> you know, 48 degrees in the summer, I was like, well, what's, what's going on here? Yeah. Um, but uh, the repertoire was incredible. Um, we played Molly Six, Chike Five, um, the Enigma Variations, Rimsky Course, with many great pieces um, with great faculty from um, the BSO, from Boston University and, and other institutions across the country. And just being in such a, a place where like music is so integral to the, like the city of Lenox, people live there in the summer just to go see the Tanglewood concerts. And that's, it, it was fascinating that I could watch with anybody on the street. It's pretty hard. You know, yeah. They would, they would just talk about the piece, you know, they'll talk about the concert from last night and I was, you know, just, it was, it was incredible. Um, and the, the level of playing is so high from these young musicians. It's, it's astounding what, you know, these 16, 17, 18 year olds are doing at such an early age. And, sure. and it's just a privilege to kind of be able to, you know, be in the same space as some of these like world-class musicians. So I, I got a lot out of it. Um, I grew like mentally as a person, also, of course, musically, uh, learned a lot of things about the profession that, you know, I wouldn't have gotten if I just played my instrument at home. So overall, i I wouldn't have traded it for the world. Absolutely. Uh, what was your favorite musical experience over the summer? I would definitely say probably playing Mahler Six um, in Ozawa Hall. It's it's a gorgeous hall, and you know they opened up the back so you can see the landscape and you know the the Berkshires, Rolling Mountains. It's it's gorgeous. Um, just playing Mahler six like I I played some Mahler symphonies before but six is by far my favorite it's a so beast. just the experience yeah. of finally yeah it's it's great it's tragic but great um <laughs> how so far just, away just from, how experience. far away from the hammer were you <laughs> very close like oh, definitely I'm sorry <laughs> I'm sorry um it was cool though because it's like I said you know when you're listening to it and you're like oh that tuba oh that tuba solo like ah oh, I'd kill to play that and then you put the music in front of you and like, and you know, now it's my time to shine. So oh, yeah. uh, those, those things, like the, just things that you pick up when you hear recordings, um, you can only get so much out of that. It's, but like when you're actually in a rehearsal space or, you know, let alone on stage and you can just like, you can almost feel and see the music in the air. And especially with things like the hammer, like you just don't understand how, how powerful like it shakes the room it it makes the entire space vibrate and so i would say the fourth movement of Mahler six is probably my favorite musical experience to date thus far sure yeah that's great um has the experience at tanglewood helped you to firm up your goal to play in a symphony orchestra professionally 
Oh, one thousand percent. Of course, every time I get the opportunity to play in an orchestra, um, it really just firmly cements in my head that this is what I want to do when I'm older. Um, I've been in some great ensembles, youth orchestras, National Youth Orchestra last year, and of course, um, the UTI Young Artist Orchestra this summer. Um, and every single time from the first downbeat, I'm just like, this is incredible. Um, the colors, the sound colors are amazing. The rep is, it's so diverse, you know, which you can have open a concert versus end. And it's just like from the beginning, it's just, you feel at home sitting yeah. in the back row, but still feeling like, you know, I, I belong here. And of course, just the people and profession, every musician I've met, it's a great person, great musician, and just people that I feel like I can get along with. And I haven't had any negative experiences in the orchestra at all. Well, you know, sometimes, you know, heart gets a little, a little repetitive, a little, a little, I lust for some, for some eighth notes sometimes, but oh, yeah. you know, it's, it's part of the job. I play the horn. We have after beats a lot of the time. So I, I, I feel your pain. Yeah. So uh, final, 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 sorry, again, say again. I was saying we're sticking in there. Oh yeah, absolutely. Final question already. Uh, why do you think a scholarship like this is particularly important right now? I think it's it's incredibly crucial because, like I mentioned earlier, um, you know, not not everybody you know can afford to do some of these things, and especially in some of the underrepresented groups, it's kind of hard to a be able to even find some of these things because not many people you know are in the classical field so it's kind of hard. you have to basically push yourself into the field and then once you get there you know you kind of unsure of where to proceed so the fact that i didn't worry financially this summer about if i was going to be able to do the thing i love most really took a huge burden off of not myself but also my parents because you know we're also thinking about college and that cost a new instrument and that cost and just varying other you know factors that go into day-to-day -day life so this scholarship I mean, it was, it basically made my summer and it's going to make the rest of my life so much better because I was able to have this summer and learn so many things before I got to college. So uh, I can't express how much this means to me and how much it'll mean to the future recipients of the scholarship as well. That's really super gratifying to hear. Yeah, I uh, really appreciated that. Um, anything else you'd like to share with Ixom listeners? Things you, things you might like people to know about you? Um, no, I mean, I think I, I've said about as much uh, as I, I can think about. Um, I love playing the tuba. Um, I love to compose. I just love to be surrounded by music. That's why I, by the time I got halfway through my senior year, or halfway through high school, rather, um, I was like, I got to go to music school because music is my happy place. Listening to it, writing it, playing it like this, that's where I feel the most comfortable. So I just encourage everybody to, of course, just keep listening to music, supporting those um, who are making music, you know, concerts and albums and all that, and just keep the field growing and expanding and, and being as powerful as it ever has been. Fantastic. Well, that's a great place to wrap it up. From all of us here at Ixom, uh, we wish you every success, and hopefully all of your Ixom future colleagues wish you every success, and uh, we look forward to seeing what you do next. Thank you so much. All righty. Bye for now. I have a good day.